Hello everyone, my name is Lavleen and I'm working on sustainability alongside Paulina and Geeta. This presentation is on assessment design to embed sustainability into curriculum. More specifically, this project helps improve sustainability literacy and skills. So plan for today is that uh, I will, uh, after a brief introduction, uh, Paulina will discuss the theoretical thinking and how we implemented it in case of economics. Later, Geeta will discuss the key results and findings of this project, such as learning experience. So we carried out this research in response to increase attention towards embedding sustainability literacy in higher education. Uh, in line with UNESCO's Global Action Program on Education for Sustainable Development and UK's inspiration to have world-leading education sector in sustainability and climate change, higher education institutions are basically, including University of Glasgow, are taking actions. In 2020, Adam Smith Business School became an advanced signatory of the United Nations uh, National Principles of Responsible Management in Education. So while there are calls to make changes at national and international levels, recent sustainability skills survey uh, from 2021 presents an interesting picture on where students feel they are currently and where they want to be. On a positive note, students report that their institutions are a positive influence uh, on their own uh, attitudes and behaviors. And despite a limited understanding on how human activity is affecting nature, they are very keen to engage with and learn more about sustainable development. And that is where we come in the picture. Many researchers have been working on this for a while and Paulina will take you through this. Yes, there is an emerging research on sustainability development and education of sustainable development. A critical question for educators is how we can create the optimal conditions and support mechanisms that allow students to develop the capacities and qualities need to meet the challenge of sustainability. And different, um, different researchers have proposed different methods and um, for example, discussion, open debate, stimulation, games. But in order to be able to offer specific transferable insights, we need to underpin, we need to think the theoretical underpin of, the, of our approaches. Some believe that transformative learning is a enable of sustainability learning. So in the context of sustainability, this type of learning must be conducted in groups of individuals with different skills, ideas, and characteristics, as well as objectives about sustainability. With this way, the students can work collaborative in order to discuss, debate, and figure out appropriate solutions. So this paper explains uh, the group design project that we have used in an elective honor course in economics degree program, environmental economics. And we will try to show you what the students, what is the students' perspective uh, about collaborative learning as an effective way to embed sustainability into curriculum and what type of skills the students had actually developed by working on this type of group project. So the next slide present uh, outlines the three assessments that we have used. So there is one interview podcast, a policy brief and a reflection. So in the first part, the students uh, have to produce an interview podcast in order to expose an urgent environmental problem selected by them to the government minister in charge. In the second part, the students, the same group of students, they should write a policy brief in order to propose to the minister how to actively and effectively resolve the environmental problem presented in the podcast. And finally, the students, they should reflect about their learning experience of the course and the group work. So um, here are all the details of the, of, the, of the assessments, so you can go through uh, with your own pace. So we have a this, this course has uh, 129 students and 86 agreed to take part to this research. So the sample has, um, 80, has 74, um, 78 females and three, 39 males. And in terms of nationality, we have 51 international and 35 domestic students. Our survey questionnaire has open uh, 
questionnaire has open and closed type questions. So the, um, we have used a Likert scale and we have also given the students the opportunity to provide us open comments. Okay, now for the results. <clears throat> First of all, it was really fantastic that students had identified noteworthy environmental problems from all over the world and then also researched into possible solutions. So you can see uh, the nice list on the screen. Now we have two slides uh, which clearly show the Likert uh, results. Um, so I won't go through these things. You can uh, pause the video and have a look. Uh, I will just uh, press on with the discussion. Now, if I say agree or positive, that means agreed uh, and strongly agreed, you know. Um, so let's carry on. Now, about sustainability literacy, which is uh, the essential aspect of our study, 89% of students were positive that the podcast developed skills in identifying environmental problems, and 92% were positive that the policy brief allowed them to actively engage in resolving environmental problems. We have added a few quotes uh, such as, I have become more aware of the urgency of tackling environmental issues by investigating the full range of current global environmental problems and their effects. Uh, now, coming to skill development, the students were really very happy with the opportunities that these uh, assessments have created. For instance, we have 93% positive responses that the policy brief developed skills transferable to the world of work. Uh, social skills wise, 77% uh, positive response for policy brief and 87% for podcast. Possibly they had to work together a lot more to create the podcast. And now there were some really heartening quotes from our diverse student body. After, so one student is saying, after the meetings for the podcast, we had informal catch-ups, which helped to create honesty about our strengths and weaknesses for work distribution. Now, a really high positivity about the development of communication skills. 91% for podcasts and a whopping 96% for the policy brief. Uh, so this is a crucial skill uh, that the students have to develop about communicating research findings to non-specialist audience. Now, uh, we also looked at uh, the developing research skills. Uh, so the policy brief objective was successfully achieved uh, with 92% positive responses. What we were also very happy about was that although these were group activities, uh, many students have indicated these also promoted independent learning. Uh, as always, uh, we are mindful of uh, neg some, any negative feedback, but we were pleasantly surprised that uh, amongst the 129 students, there were only five negative comments uh, about th these team-based activities. So overall, student experience in these assessments has been really very positive. 81% agreed that podcast was an enjoyable experience and 90% agreed that the policy brief made learning more interesting. Uh, so they are saying great assessments which were different to traditional forms used in economics. So many students also have indicated that they would like these types of assessments to continue. And we will, of course, do our best to do that. So there were some uh, noteworthy differences in podcast and policy brief responses based on their genders or whether they are domestic or international students, which we have presented in slides. So you can have a look at it uh, in your own time. So this final slide concludes that students' perception of our assessment is overwhelmingly positive, especially responses of, of our international students. The assessment has been very beneficial in more than one way, uh, enhancing sustainability competencies, uh, in establishing good group work processes and trust, facilitating independent learning, et cetera. And it can be used uh, for other courses too. So it's not limited to economics or environmental economics course. So uh, I would like to thank you for listening to us and if you have any kind of feedback for us, or if you would like to discuss this further with us, please feel free to contact us. Thank you once again. Thank you.